you, you said a lot of things here about mm -hmm. your observations, mm -hmm. particularly about public figures. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things you wrote here is reading a speech makes you a statue. Absolutely. It's the worst thing. Let, let, me read, let me read what you said here. There are no boring speeches, mm -hmm. only boring speakers. Absolutely. Now, you wrote, perhaps one of the major reasons for our current boring democratic experience is because most of the present political gladiators, from the highest to the lowest levels, have not proven themselves as effective communicators. Absolutely, and we see that. I mean, get to watch the, the 10 o'clock news on channels, and I can tell you, in my uh, in our school, rather, we have tons and tons of video footage that we have built up, because most of what you see are political leaders stuck with reading word for word. What happens when you read? The first thing that disappears is the strength of the voice. The voice begins to drone. And as goes the voice in droning, so goes the entire energy and atmosphere. And before you know it, your audience begins to go in the direction. The speaker is the driver. The speaker holds the key. A good communicator can make an environment come alive by his first words and how he delivers on those lines. Mm -hmm. So when you look at our current democratic experience, you find that Show me our Obamas. Mm -hmm. Show me our Camerons. Show me our Tony Blairs. Where are they? When you look at the entire landscape, few and far between, we'd even be lucky to really point sterling examples in eloquence. And that's the point. And when that is missing, the issues, what comes up to take that place become the typical arguments that tend to heat up the system. But in the presence of a viable debate, debates can only thrive when there are good communicators, men and women who can articulate the issues such that there is a connect between the subject and the audience, which is you and I, the citizenry. We don't have that, sadly, in significant proportion. I think I have to agree with you on that. Mm. <laughs> with all, the, with mm. all due respect. With, with all due respect. I, I've yes. listened to so many speeches mm. and... Uh, just, yes, you're just lost. One of the things you said here is um, you try to relate effective public speaking mm -hmm to success in career, Absolutely. in whatever it is you are doing. Talk to me a little bit about that. I had there, a, there's a correlation, isn't there? Definitely there is. Uh, about eight years ago, a, a lady in her mid-40s walked into my office, uh, Judy. I, I talk about her in the book. And she came, excellent banker, eight years with this bank, always wanted to become a, a branch manager, but three attempts, three wonderful openings that came up. She was turned down the first time, turned down the second time, and the third time. So, sort of the experience that really nailed her coffin, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Our subordinate that she had trained for eight years was preferred instead of her. And so she cried out in disappointment. Only then did uh, superiors call her into the office and say to her, Judith, we love you, we appreciate you, you are our best hand. But there's no way we can ever make you a branch manager. Why? Because your speaking skills suck. We don't just want you to get, mobilize the deposits and get us the, the money, but when you become a branch manager, you're leading a team of 25 to 35 people. You've got to speak to them. You've got to set the tone. That skill you do not have, but guess what? Your subordinate has it, and she's going to be promoted ahead of you. She lost out in terms of a great opportunity. That would have marked a new vista in her life. She lost out in terms of her own self-esteem as a person. She lost out personally. In terms of income, she also lost out. In terms of respect, she lost out. So you couldn't count. Because she couldn't speak well. Because she couldn't speak well. Now, she was a good subject matter expert. She knew the ins and outs of banking. But as you climb, as you climb and rise through the ranks, you find that more of your leadership capacity is what the system demands. Therefore, communication becomes a very, very important engine, becomes pivotal in terms of driving you and helping you make a world of a difference. She did not make that cut. So she's a classical example, and I talk about her in the book, of the consequences of not paying attention to this skill. And she's also a classical example of the prospects that await you when you pay attention to this skill as a subordinate. Hmm. Realize that she suddenly could be promoted twice as fast over, above, over and above our own superior, our own mentor, because she had that edge. Hmm. And that's the difference. It makes or breaks. Hmm. Now, you, you said here that it is quality public speaking that inspires a student to love an otherwise uninteresting subject. I wish most teachers would understand this. Teachers need this, don't they? 
teachers more than more than any group of professionals need this. There are no boring topics. There are no boring subject matters. Take a look at how Larry Zamoji spoke about sports. Sports used to be boring on radio. But when he came on the scene, he enlivened it. It wasn't just what he said as much as it was how he said it. And all of a sudden, that created a fresh experience. And people connected and followed. The same thing for teachers in our schools. When teachers have good speaking skills, they can transform the learning experience. And that's why no subject matter is boring. No subject matter should be too difficult if the right communicator can harness it. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, let me read. Uh, we're running out of time now, mm -hmm. so we have to round up. Um, so yeah, you wrote, if you will not be perceived as weak, mm -hmm. you must speak with power. Absolutely. Speak with power if you are to be taken seriously. Absolutely. It doesn't matter the position you occupy. Mm -hmm. The inability to speak effectively and authoritatively will portray you as weak. Absolutely. And that takes us to the, I mean, the, 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 the title of this book, book Speak Indeed. With Power. Absolutely. Now, in speaking with power, the first thing I try to let people know that speak with power is not about speaking at the top, you know, at the top of your voice, screaming and shouting and trying to be like sort of a, an ag aggressive Pentecostal fiery, fairy preacher. No, speak with power is understanding the elements of eloquence. What are the elements? First is to be effective such that your audience get your message. Second is to be powerful such that you influence your audience to think towards that direction. Now, if you can bring those two things together, which I capture in diagrammatic form in the book, then you are speaking with power alongside the other things that you learn to mechanically deploy. Ubong, thank you very much for Always a pleasure joining Kune. us on Channel's Book Club. Thank you. Let me start speaking with power now. You, you truly have, and I tell you, you've gripped me with power as well. <laughs> thank you. Always a pleasure. Nice to have you here. Yeah.